Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of XCOM 2, a War of the Chosen. This time it is the Rise of the Robots uh, campaign. My name is Saiken and today we're going to continue our legendary Iron Man Permanent Dark Events campaign where we are only allowed to use Sparks and Psionically Active Classes. You heard me right, that is psionic classes only and rookies at this point because we neither have sparks nor psyops. Today we're going to run into a mission with losses and that is always a lot of fun. I am very much looking forward to it because it means we have some solid shootouts prepared. If you play the losses right, they are not much of a threat. Uh, we are of course going to remove uh, the um, ones that are tired. You can see the DM and Halop are currently tired and we're going to give some more rookies uh, the ability to join us. Today it's going to be XUS6 and Russ uh, who are joining us. Sonar is going to have a repeated appearance. XQS, I think the one thing that I could optimize is we still got some DLC weapons. They are always available. Might as well give that to xqs 6 and uh, that is pretty much it that's the only thing that we do have we have no more equipment at this point i'm going to keep it kind of as lightly equipped as potent uh, as possible that way we can put all of our funds into the rush of psionics and spark all right and we're about to land so the good news is we actually only need to save uh, the scientists because the ranger would be good in a normal run, but for us, it's really no good at all. We can't use the Ranger, it would violate our rules, which means might as well just go for the scientists. So what we want to do is we want to take kind of the high ground. You probably cannot really see that, but I already um, have played through so many buildings that I know their structure quite well. So we're going to go through here and take this, this balcony. That's going to be our strategy. In order to do that though, we gotta be a bit careful because we might run into some losts. And as long as we have not found any of uh, those, we're just going to take Overwatch. The exposition uh, turn uh, timer isn't really terribly threatening. If it runs out, nothing like truly scary is going to happen. It's the first time that we saw, uh, see the losts and a couple of losts are sprinting into our direction. Good. Nothing is triggered, which is perfect. Upstairs, there's uh, losses are never upstairs, so might as well just run all the way up here. And finally, Russ is going to block the ladder. By blocking the ladder, the losses can no longer access the high ground, which means they will kind of move into our direction and then just stand there. And not even that. They just fail to move all together. All right, moving up. I just want to make sure that we're uh, going to do fine. Opening the door. Nothing there, like I was expecting it. Will do. Oh, okay, that could actually be a bit of a problem because we cannot fully block them off. They will be able to move up, but there is a solution for it. Um, and the solution is namely just getting as close into a line of sight as possible and overwatch. Yeah, it was a bit reckless to move uh, just like that. We're maybe going to be hit once, depending on how the overwatch shots go. But next round we will be retaking the balcony. And with that, there will be no further problem. So yeah, they are charging in. That's a solid kill. Good job, Hogbite. Yeah, 
and we have not been hit. All right, sonar here moves out. Starts blasting away. It's all of the lost down and from here on it's pretty safe because we now can stand up here. There is the potential that they will come up from behind, but that chance is rather low. On the other hand, Hogbite can already jump down. Let's see if that is going to trigger some more losts. Yes, it will. And that's fine. I got a strategy for it as well. All right, killing this lost here. Hawkbite gets some focus and we're just going to help him get up here. XQ6 moves a tiny bit to the side. Hawkbite moves up and that's how you kind of seal the level up here again. Overwatch shot has hit very well. That's perfect. The turret just ran dry of ammo. They've got nothing to hold back the loss now. Menace one five, get to their position on the double. Good. Hogbite continues to sort of do the rescue mission. All right, fair enough. So we're going to seal this one off again. And we got to be a bit careful with Hogbite because there are potentially a lot of loss just charging for him. Next turn, we're going to go in deeper. For now, we're overwatching. There's the first swarm of loss and it might look overwhelming at first, but here's the deal how, at least in my experience, you can relatively easily deal with most of the loss. Number one, make sure that you are far enough away from uh, their movement rate. So unless you're spotting them out eventually, just like I did after a double move, you normally do have the chance to just move far enough away for them to not attack. They cannot double move and attack. They are usually bound to a single attack, a uh, single move plus attack afterwards. Secondly, just try to use uh, the high ground to your advantage, uh, like I'm doing here. The plus fifteen percent to hit chance um, are fantastic. Plus twenty, sorry, plus twenty percent hit chance are fantastic. Yeah, and that way you can essentially chain kill most of them. The lost dashers are a bit of a problem from time to time. And you will see them, uh, the nameplate says lost dasher. And essentially they are faster losts compared to the others. Good. As for Hawkbite himself... We're going to use a tactic that I've uh, used quite a bit, which is aggressive move in. We could now parry, but that's not the point. Uh, we would still get hit. So, and if, if you're taking high ground, that means the loss cannot easily follow you to Give him some cover. We're going to reload wherever needed. Overwatch 
and that means they should move into our direction directly into an overwatch trap yeah there we go Very good. Let's continue with our rampage. That was unfortunate. Could have reloaded beforehand just to make it a bit more safe, so it was a tiny bit reckless. Alright, time for our scientist to move out of here. Yeah, we do not need to do that. So instead, we're going to rent this guy, kill it. We got momentum. I'm going to use that just to run away. I'm going to play it a bit faster here. I could easily go on and kill more of them. I only lost basically in range, but not even being able to catch up to us is that one lost. He'll get two overwatch shots and he will be uh, not fast enough to even reach us. And now more and more losses are coming in. The optimal way to play that if you were in a normal campaign would be to just st sit up uh, the balcony and farm them until everybody has their promotion under their belt. See, that's the beauty of the lost dashers, beauty in, in air quotes. They are incredibly fast. And by thinking about it, I might just want to give Hogbite the opportunity here to get some more kills because he actually can be leveled up. Good. Seems everybody got their promotion under their belt. Yes, Commander. Moving through the lower levels here. We're going to do one more round of Overwatch. It's killer time. Back in. And next round everybody is yeah, just going to go back. Yeah, the, clo the, the spawning points of the swarms will always be about 600 to 800 uh, units away from your current position. So that's yeah, basically out of, uh, out of uh, side of the out of sight of uh, the soldiers and that's where the enemies will spawn yeah and it looks a lot but if you think about it it is actually not that many enemies I personally like to get the dashers down. If we can't kill this guy... Oh, okay, good. If we couldn't kill this guy, we would have stayed for another round um, up here. And we're probably going to stay for another round because we cannot immediately kill all of uh, them and I don't want to be chased by the dashers. There is a good reason for that. It'll just, once you are no longer on the balcony, with less of an aim bonus, it'll become substantially more difficult to deal with them because your soldiers will start to miss more often. 
Changing sights. Out of ammo here. Target neutralized. Reloaded. We're gonna need to reload soon. All right, softening up the brood over here. That's good. Like I said, it looks like a lot of enemies, but once you get the hang of it, they actually die quite fast. Good, we're going to do one more overwatch and... Yeah, with mo uh, momentum we can easily go back and that should be it for now. Not surprisingly another Lost Swarm appears, but this time we're better prepared. And there are less Lost Dashers with that one. Yeah, you can already see how it would um, easily continue. Good. Gotta get the dashers out of the way once they are down. We can move. Alright, I can leave one soldier. Ah, no. We're going... That was unfortunate. Not going to leave one soldier behind. I want to show you how it's done the correct way, which is getting the lost dashers away and then just sprinting. Of course, you could also run, but there is a residual risk of them catching up and you missing shots. So if you're in this position, might as well play to your advantage and not to your disadvantage. So another overwatch. can already get the VIP further to the exit. And hopefully, for the love of God, we're able to finish all of the dashers this time. Good. It appears this time it's just one dasher, as far as I'm concerned. So that guy was a bit too close for comfort. And this here is the dasher. And I think everybody else is not a dasher and that's exactly the situation that I wanted. Lost, lost and lost. Perfect. Good. Now this is our win of opportunity. Time for everyone to double move. Not even going to reload, which I normally would, because we're taking advantage of our enormous speed by double moving. Ogbite moves out as well. Yeah, you can see another swarm appears this time. It will probably have a couple of lost stashers within it. Doesn't matter for us, the other swarm is way too far behind. And that's exactly what I uh, wanted. XQS 6 is moving out. Hogbite is already at the landing zone. VIP almost at the landing zone. And yeah. One more round and we're done. They cannot catch up. Once you're double moving, only the dashers can uh, cause to be a problem. Everybody else is just fine. Ask 
That's affirmative. Good. Seems as if that was a flawless mission. Cool. Very good. We only got a good because we didn't do the optional mission, but yeah, you know what it, uh, how it is. Um, we didn't need to do that in this particular run. And look at that. We are landing. Probably Hogbite will not get a promotion. Nope. We got everybody else promoted, but that doesn't do us any good. We got Enrique Perez, however. Muy bien. He is a fantastic ad addition because it'll mean our autopsy only takes three more days for now. And that means we already got two scientists. I was contemplating whether or not to go. Oh, nice supplies. That's what we need. I was contemplating whether or not to go for a laboratory just so that we can yeah, maximize our uh, research capacity. And I made the decision that I probably will do that. So it is laboratory as the second building. And since laboratories take a while, yeah, 40 days. Uh, so we're going to keep Nick here working on the laboratory. A laboratory rush is only really valuable if you actually build it fast. So uh, many people uh, might not look really at the concept of opportunity costs, but when you're going to rush sparks and or psi operatives, you incur a lot of opportunity costs. Uh, same for the laboratory rush. So imagine if we're just not speeding it up. 40 days means it's not really a rush anymore. And um, instead, we could use that engineer to essentially clear an alien debris in 10 days and probably even the machinery here in 30 days. So you will get a lot more resources as an influx much, much earlier. We're now giving that up essentially and in, in return gain a laboratory relatively soon. Perfect. We got a proving ground unlocked. We can now also build a skull check. And yes, we're going for resistance communication because we want to expand. I will need expansion in order to get more supplies. So that's the whole idea. And currently, I think we also got enough intel to make contact. So yeah, we could, we might even be able to do it before the month ends. And the obligatory retaliation comes in. That's the last mission for the first month. And we're, of course, going to do that, guys. But uh, before we are going to do that, I need a little break and we'll see each other in the next episode. In the meantime, if you want to do me a favor, hit that like button and leave a comment down below. Thank you and goodbye.